Hello, world. Welcome to another frank conversation here on the Spiritual Playboy Network. I'm joined by a dear soulmate, pansexual, gender queer, tantric mentor, speaker, and author of seven books, also has appeared on the hit docuseries Married and Dating as well as is the lead facilitator. It is my great honor to introduce to you Kamala Devi McClure. Welcome to the show. My pleasure, Frank. It's good to be with you. Oh, I find myself a bit nervous to interview you. You're like one of the first people that I'm actually nervous. I find myself catching my words. Uh, it is an honor to have you here. And today we've agreed to have a discussion on something that I feel is a, a very important conversation. And for me, also makes me a bit nervous because I will be honest and speak into that this is not my expertise. And uh, one of the motivations that I've invited you to this conversation is because I want to learn. I want to learn uh, a bit more about um, gender and gender expression and gender fluidity. And, you know, even the way you express yourself uh, or your, in, your bio says pansexual, gender queer. Let's start off by saying, what does this mean? Sure. Yeah, it is uh, quite a new conversation and it's emergent. So even as I try to define things or make distinctions, um, I'm sort of pointing in the direction of uh, something the collective is becoming more and more aware of. Uh, and so having been on this path, you know, now I'd say I came out over 20 years ago <laughs> and I came out as lesbian and, you know, I was, I was a queer activist then, but I've seen the conversation morph and change as culture is changing. So the, the disclaimer is as we speak and I share about my um, identity. It's only now, you know, it's, it may be different than that, you know, by the time you're watching this. Um, but yeah, je like, so pansexual speaks to the sexuality, right? So instead of being the, the lesbian that I first identified as pansexual is uh, pan being like many and not just by, but being attracted to not just two different genders, but all genders, um, and gender queer is where the um, my my gender ha has more of a fluid. Queer is more of an umbrella term. So a lot of times, if someone says I'm queer, that's not an answer. It's an invitation for a deeper question. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Um, so I'm glad you're making the deeper question. Question, Frank. I think it's um, it's a bold inquiry, but specifically gender, which is different than sexuality, which as you brought up is different than expression. And, um, you know, all of those things are to be defined from the inside, from the person who's, who's, um, you know, as opposed to something that we label out each other, it's something that has to be defined from within. Mm. So um, I want to make a huge distinction uh, and it's something that you and I've talked about at some depth because uh, we're both, you know, lead faculty for the, for the ISTA school and the, the work that we do is in sexual shamanism. So the shamanic realm has a long, deep, lineage and history, of course, it's like twisted roots, uh, but with gender bending and um, changing and morphing of genders in a way that's very different than the current uh, po like identity politics that we hear and see in the, you know, in the news and at the pride parades. 
Yeah, that, that's a very good distinction. Like the, the public and the, the conversation that's happening in uh, society and in culture versus the depth of where we go uh, in the shamanic realms. And uh, I think both are important. And so I want to touch on both of them. So let's start off with the socio-cultural perspective. Um, one of the things uh, that you pronounce uh, as you, we get to know you is actually how you came out in this new wave of your life is that when you started to flirt, I was there when that day that you started to yeah. flirt, changing your pronoun. And you went from she, her uh, to they, them. And so I'm curious if you could speak a bit about why pronouns are important and what does it mean to you to, to shift from a, a, a she, her to a they, them? I love it. It's, it's such a sweet memory. Um, it was a couple years ago and we were in New York, you know, in uh, this this gay owned and run retreat center. And we were doing a training and I remember the, the directive, it wasn't even coming from us. It was one of our ISTA organizers who said, let's try on everyone changing their pronoun for the day. Right. And it was like, what a, what a wild social experiment. And I had, I had not really considered how, you know, of course I was sensitive to any of my transitioning any friends who had transitioned or you know were in the transition of um being transgender that you know that that pronouns was a very sensitive topic and it was a, hey this is how i identify and of course i wanted to be sensitive and then we all slip up and you know i was i was having this this challenge like wow i really i miss sometimes misgender you know some of my dear friends and it's so embarrassing and hard to make that adjustment, why don't we step into their shoes? That, that was the experiment was like, hey, let's put ourselves in that shoes and see, see how, how it feels for us. And let's play with those energies. And then we realize the privilege that it is to either be a she or a he, if you're cisgendered, cisgendered being, you know, that you're aligned with what you were assigned at birth. And so um, I had considered myself at that point I had considered myself cisgendered and I had the privilege of, you know, I'm really comfortable as a she always have been. And then when I tried on they for a day, it was like, I wept. I was like, this feels more appropriate to how I see myself, which is not how I see myself from the outside in, but like something inside of me was expressing more fully and when when people called me, you know, you, you don't actually hear they, them. Like, it's not like when you change your name and people call you a name because people use pronouns when you're not even around. <laughs> Generally, it was more like me telling people, you know, I'm Kamala Devi I'm, and the, my pronouns are they, them. It gave permission to my sense of self, which actually has always been plural. So it was less about being gendered. And it was more about being plural, you know, feeling that I'm multiple souls. And that's different than multiple personalities, by the way. Yeah, so when I think of you, and I've been on the journey with you for a long time, and, and especially in the last five years, one of the things that really inspires me is uh, your boldness, your, your, your leadership, you, the fact that you are a trailblazer. And I've always felt you very fluid. Like one day I, I would feel like this really feminine, soft, emotional, vulnerable uh, being. And then another day I could feel you like really focused and, and uh, impactful and um, go-getter and initiate, initiating. And it was always beautiful, that, that dance that you, you've done. And, you know, I've never really, you know, take, uh, thought about it more than that's, you know, the full range of Kamala Devi. And now it's like you have really uh, gone one step further uh, with that. And I've, uh, with this, this idea that 
not only have you uh, decided to publicly and come out to say, I'm taking on they, them, so please see me as more gender neutral than one or on one of the binaries, but you've also invited your body to feel into um, manifesting more of that fluidity. And if I may say so, uh, uh, introduce this, I know that you have uh, begun to take some hormones to support that. Can you speak a bit about that decision to, to get on hormones and, and what is that story? I w I'm, I'm curious. I sure. want to know more about what's going on in internally f for somebody to move it like this. Yeah. So typically, uh, whether it's, you know, testosterone or estrogen, you know, hormone replacement therapy or hormone therapy, like, or gender reassignment, like that journey is typically done by someone who's, who's felt like, Hey, I, inside, um, I am not the gender that matches my outside, right? So, so um, usually women who take testosterone at the dosage that I started taking it um, are because they're not women. It's like, hey, I, I don't feel like a woman and I want, my, I want to be able to um, change my expression, you know, change my um, facial hair or, or drop my voice or... Um, in order to, yeah, like, you know, it's not just hair and voice. It's like the, the weight redistribution to really transform my body. And um, I don't actually see myself as a, a man trapped in a woman's body. Um, but I do know that there's, like, there's, masculine energy inside of me, there's like a man and or, you know, energetically that doesn't have a way of expressing in this very delicate, very feminine, very uh, estrogen hijacked system that's like you said, very emotional. <laughs> so as an artist, I feel like um, if the full range of who I am includes this really strong masculine focused, you know, like um, driven being, I can only get so far with the current you know, bath, chem, you know, neurochemical bath that I'm in. And so it's a desire to experience uh, more of the frequency of the masculine energy that is me. Um, and so it's, it's not, you know, I, I really want to say I'm speaking from my own experience. I'm not representing anyone else, but the uh, medicine journey that I've been on is is really that it's a psycho spiritual medicine journey, not a physical one. It's not like, Oh, I want to, although my voice has been dropping and my weight has been redistributing. It's not like I'm trying to transition into being um, in a male body. And that's, yes. yeah, that's, so it's, you know, it's a path of a non-binary, like using testosterone throne and that's kind of novel and, and experimental. Yeah, that, that's what, you know, really uh, makes me curious to have this conversation with you because, uh, you know, when we think of uh, gender reassignment or whatnot, it's like we, we've seen that. We understand there's a, uh, a greater access point to understanding, how, you know, people changing from one gender to another. And the word that you use, novel, in terms of really doing it to come into uh, a greater understanding or synergy with both your vibrations. I think this is uh, really fresh as a, a concept or as, um, as a journey. And so what have you noticed so far on, on this journey? And, and I recognize, thank you for saying that you don't represent anybody. And I also want to honor the fact that we are having a, uh, a personal conversation, but you know, the personal conversation is really as an inspiration to open up the conversation to like greater understanding of the whole package. So thank you for allowing us to, to delve into your personal life a tad. So, <laughs> For you, like, what do you feel uh, have you acquired uh, or accessed um, so far in this that, that inspires you? Yeah, so to give a little context, um, you know, oftentimes testosterone is taken, um, you know, in a higher dosage. It's, it's prescribed when, when someone has gender 
um, dysphoria. So they're not mm, happy in their body for various you know, reasons. It's like, this, this is not me. And it feels there's a despondency or a frustration. And it actually feels like the, the, the part of gender dysphoria that I can identify with is feeling um, sometimes like an, like, am, like an amputee mm. feels like, hey, I have sensations in my energetic cock and I don't have an energetic cock. And that's very, it's like, it's like frustrating, like something's lost. And, and you know, psychologists would call that penis envy. And, you know, there's ways of different ways of looking at it, but it, that kind of angst is what brings someone to the doctor and says, look, this is, this is a condition and it doesn't feel good. And I really want to take the testosterone as a medicine in order to have more congruency between my body and how I feel inside. And so I want to offer a lot of like empathy, like this is a real thing. It's not like, oh, you could just, you know, choose to be whatever gender you want. It's like, actually people don't, you know, have choice necessarily. It's finding like the true nature of who you are and trying to express that. So having said that, um, I now, I guess it's almost um, six months ago, not quite, um, started taking testosterone in, um, you know, the minimal dosage and it often takes about a year of a kind of a puberty before someone's, you know, really starts growing. Um, and, and it can be like in high doses, it can be in the first three months, you can get mustache, you can get, um, you know, the fat redistribution that I talked about. I mean, like, I felt immediately the voice drop and have an, like a little app that told me, oh, look, you're in the feminine range. Oh, look, you're in the mask, you know, like, and, and daily my voice was noticeably dropping. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that I've noticed, but I'm not taking a really high, I'm not forcing a, a puberty with the intention of doing that transition. And there's certain things that are irreparably um, irreversible, you know, and, you know, once hair growth happens and you have a beard, like you can start taking a maintenance dose after, um, you know, you've already had those changes and, and the hair follicles and, and the voice drop it is irreversible. So there's a certain, you know, like as a non-binary person, there's a certain caution to, you know, the, how much, how much do I want to take and how far? And so I'm modulating that with the care of, you know, transgender health specialists and, and family and, and, you know, really being, uh, doing a lot of listening, you know, to self and source in that process. So my experimentation in the last five months has been um, very moderated. Uh, and the biggest answer, the biggest like breakthrough uh, to your question is the immense mental and emotional peace and ease. Mm. Like I, I never expected Frank that this, that I could be so um, calm, centered, focused. You know, I, I admire that in my male lovers, <laughs> but to actually have access to a new level of that was uh, astounding. Mm. Yeah. And Appreciate it. Yeah. And also just like, so simple. It almost felt like I, you know, the world just became more Zen. <laughs> I was like, whoa, it does not have to be that complicated. <laughs> I so appreciate your um, authenticity and transparency. It touches me. Actually, I feel it. It's, it does touch me deeply. And uh, one of the things it touches is the recognition of how much courage it takes to really step into this and, and like make that decision. It's like, you know, I, I, whether it be for you or for any person that's going on the journey of saying, I, I want to do this transition or I want to step greater into a deeper um, a neutrality. I just really, the courage reaches me. So I'm a bit overclumped at the moment. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And it's so, it's so, um, you know, I think what you're responding to is my soul shine. Um, I don't feel courageous. It doesn't feel bold to me. It just feels like, um, you know, if I, if I just stay true to who I am and I keep saying, like, what is my truth? This is the natural, like, 
exploration. That's how it feels. It feels like, how can I be more me? Because anything else feels like a like a cheap substitute. <laughs> um, and and the and and that target that being me is it feels a lot more. Um, it's lot. It's not clear. It's not like I'm going. I'm transitioning from being a woman into being a man. There's not an end goal to it. It's more like just staying connected to that. And that's where I really want to make the distinction of uh, the gender transcendence. Like mm-hmm. I'm not transgendered, but my soul is hermaphroditic. Like it is not, it's both and it's neither. It's like this, there's a transcendent nature to the soul. And that's what I'm, you know, in pursuit of. Yeah. And so that was my, my uh, next um, direction that I wanted to go to is these shamanic realms and the fact that, you know, in Ista uh, verbia or jargon, we would say uh, the hermaphroditic dragon that we all are in the soul realms. And so I'm, what I'm deducing is that this a journey that you're exploring and uh, investing and committing to uh, is more about um, recognizing your soul path here in manifest form. That's a question. Yeah. So it, it is multidimensional. So it's hard to say, okay, this is what it's about. People have asked me because on the physical level, you know, I'm going through menopause and there was a moment when I was like, should I get my baby maker taken out? Like a lot of trans men get hysterectomies and, you know, like there's a feeling of like, would that make me feel more me if I wasn't feeling the pull of the wound? You know, there's different things that physically and emotionally, I feel more stable in this way. And then spiritually, I don't feel like I'm one soul. Like it's not just a one hermaphroditic soul that's both. I actually am an artist and a channel and a lot of what comes through me and what, you know, what I'm in service to and what I, my body is used by, it feels like like 10 souls get to play in this playground, <laughs> which is some of what you referred to. Like, as you, it's like, ooh, I get to write this book and channel these voices and, and go on this exploration. And I've had like 30 lives in this one life. You know, there's a feeling of that's what the they, them is. It's more about being a plural, you know, in the plurality than being, you know, in this identity. (laughs) Um, So, so I don't, I don't know that I can say this is the one thing it's about. So. Well, I feel your brilliance. You're right. You know, when, when I said I was touched, like I do feel your brilliance. I do feel you. Like I said, I've known you for a while and you know, feeling into your uh, energetic self, I'm feeling like you're really landing and you're really getting bigger than, you're already a big character. <laughs> we knew that, you know, like I know that about you. Uh, and you've done so much from, you know, representing, uh, you know, lesbians and then getting married and being this big world renowned public polyamorous and, and speaker and representative for the poly community. And now, you know, other than the pansexual gender, queer, and now stepping into this, I I feel you and I see you and I honor you for really going after um, what's uh, alive for you. Mm-hmm. So I just want to acknowledge you and thank you for taking this time to answer these very personal questions. I hope that this gives um, our viewers the opportunity to, the intention of this conversation was really to support people to get, to peer into the, um, the, the internal process of individuals as we get into a culture of uh, deeper fluidity, uh, greater acceptance. um, One of my intentions was to bring more information here so that we can understand. And it's through the understanding, even through your small personal experience, that we can uh, come into greater acceptance and larger heart and more love for all individuals uh, going through any version 
portion of this journey. So at this point, I just want to offer you the opportunity to um, share any last words that you might have about this journey, uh, uh, advice for uh, people watching, or just uh, something to consider. One of the most limiting thoughts that we can have, and it's a paradox, it's an irony, is that I know myself. You know, the irony is that one of the greatest spiritual directives is like, we're here to know ourselves and to be true to that in the world. Like, that's the teaching. But the minute that we know ourselves, you know, we actually stop like we kind of identify as something, we harden ourselves and we, we stop growing. And so the invitation is to stay in the inquiry, to stay in the curiosity of who am I, you know, who am I now and who am I becoming? Because we're both being and becoming all the time and to not, not harden our identity and get stuck into thinking that we are one thing um, because ultimately... Uh, then we're going to just be the shell of what's possible. Really appreciate that. Um, I want to give you one last opportunity to share a bit of what's really alive in your life right now. Or, um, you, know, sh you know, I know you're an, an amazing author. You've uh, put out, as I said at the top of this, seven books. Maybe you want to speak about, uh, you know, your new child or anything that really is alive that you can direct individuals watching this to uh, check out uh, to get to know you and your work a bit deeper. Sure. Yeah. So what's most relevant to this conversation is the recent uh, anthology. So it's a collection of stories called Sex Shamans. And so in those 20 different personal narratives, um, you know, my story is one of them. And that talks about the nature of the soul walk-in and other shamans have other like awakenings. And I think if you read this book, you'll see yourself and you'll recognize, wow, there's a lot more going on here than <laughs> you may, may know. And the levels of sexuality and spirituality, um, a lot of times we're kind of sleepwalking and this book can, can actually wake us up to more. Thank you. So where can we find it? Everywhere. And where can we learn more about you? <laughs> yeah, so Se Sex Shamans on Amazon and everywhere the books are sold. But go to kamaladevi.com, sign up for my uh, newsletter, and then that way we'll stay in touch. Beautiful. Deep, deep bow, deep, deep bow for all that you are. And on a personal note again, uh, I love you. I love, I love you. you so much. Uh, one of the things that touches me the most is, uh, you know, me, I'm uh, big and brash and I rub people the wrong way. Sometimes not purposely, sometimes purposely. And uh, what I really want to thank you for is for always listening to me, always giving me a chance to be in full expression and uh, never judging me. And... Uh, really looking for the middle path and supporting me to really understand the middle path. And so um, thank you for being that being in my life. I really, really appreciate it. You have such a beautiful heart, Frank. It's, it's like you are a gorgeous man. I love you. Thank you. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, this is a great place to transition. And I will ask you uh, to come on to my Daring World podcast to speak more about uh, creativity and um, how to channel creativity. So this will be coming up as well. So thank you, Kamala Devi. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, you could check out more on the spiritualplayboy.com. Com. If you want to know a bit more about myself and my work, you can go to frankmondelze.com and there you'll have a portal into the Spiritual Playboy channel, the Daring World podcast, and also access my schedule to find out a bit more about what I'm doing uh, in these times uh, around the world and um, uh, online and so on and so forth. Thank you for um, watching and please feel free to uh, comment, like, and share. 
And like I always say, let love free. It's the only way we'll ever change anything. Peace.